In this video, we'll talk about how to set up the import spreadsheet template to import cost codes, cost budgets, and contract amounts for fixed lump sum, cost plus without GMP, and cost plus with GMP contracts. The same template works with each of these three. For every import in Sage Construction Management, the Help Center provides a sample template that you can use as the basis for preparing your spreadsheet. To find the prime contract template, open the Help Center by selecting the Help Site icon in the upper right corner, then select Getting Started on the left side navigation panel, and select the Topic Import Options from Microsoft Excel. This topic gives you quick links to all of the import templates. Under Contract Administration, select the first topic on importing job cost codes and original prime contract budgets. Scroll down to the section labeled Microsoft Excel Import Samples. I'm going to use the CSI 2016 Divisions example, but you can select any of the options. However, one thing to keep in mind is that most of these templates work with the first three contract types, fixed lump sum, or cost plus with or without GMP. For unit price contracts, we'll use a slightly different template, and I'll talk about that one as well, but most of the fields we see here will also apply to unit price contracts too. Also note that below the sample templates, in the section labeled Microsoft Excel fields, first row, we'll see tables that explain each column in the spreadsheet. These can be used for reference. When we import any spreadsheet into Sage Construction Management, we'll need to have the values on the first sheet or tab in the workbook, and that sheet must be named Sheet 1 with no space. The system will ignore all other sheets after the first one, and it will only import a sheet with the correct name Sheet 1. The required fields are the order, or the sequence the lines are arranged in the contract, followed by the cost code, the cost code description, quantity, and unit of measure. All other fields are optional. This sample template has been color-coded so we can talk about the columns in groups. Yours doesn't need to have the colors, they just make it easier for me to explain what we're looking at. The first section is purple, and these are the cost code columns. The cost code and cost code description columns are for the project cost codes that will be used specifically for this project. Now, let's talk about how project-specific cost codes relate to your company's master cost code list. Suppose you have one or more sets of cost code libraries, which you created in settings, and you use them for reporting and analysis across all projects. You want to keep your cost codes and descriptions consistent across all projects, so your reports are meaningful. When you add project-specific cost codes here, you can modify them as needed to fit the current project. Then, you can add additional columns that tie to your master cost code list. Those master cost code numbers and descriptions should match the master list exactly, and that's what will enable that cross-project reporting. You'll recall that cost codes can be sectioned into four tiers, and you don't need to use any sections, but if you do use sections for reporting and grouping, you can provide information about how each cost code is sectioned. For example, columns D and E have the headings Cost Code Division and Cost Code Division Description. That lets me specify the first tier, the division, to which this cost code belongs. I could add additional fields for the cost code major section, minor, sub minor, and I've created another example using the major groupings here. Remember, the help topic explains how to name additional columns if you want to include more grouping levels. Just remember that cost codes will be tracked and reported at the level of detail you specify in this spreadsheet, so if you only need to see totals by division, you don't need to add these extra columns. Now, remember that project owners might have their own cost code structure that they want you to use. You can accommodate that by including two additional columns, the owner cost code and owner cost code description columns. For example, you might track cost codes at the cost code minor level, but your project owner wants to see costs summarized by division. You can assign each of your project cost codes to an owner cost code and then generate any client facing documents such as prime invoices or the prime contract itself using the owner's preferred structure. After the cost code groupings, you'll see the quantity and units expected for this contract item. And if you don't specify these values, the default value will be one with LS for lump sum as the unit. You can always change any values on the prime contract later, 
but it's helpful to have as much information as you can in the spreadsheet. The next section, the red columns, lets us set up our expected costs for this contract. This section includes the five standard cost types, labor, material, equipment, sub, and other. The quantities in the cost column should not include your profit, overhead, fees, or other markups as those will be included in the revenue column. The original cost budgets we use here do not include the cost budgets related to change orders. Prime change orders have their own separate cost budget and revenue budget. So tracking is kept separate in Sage CM for a very specific reporting purpose. The green column, the revenue budget, is the amount you'll bill the project owner, your client. This column represents your schedule of values. The revenue budget amount for each cost code should always be greater than the sum of the costs in the red section. This is how you will ensure that you make a profit. The revenue budget does include the cost budget amounts plus the profit, overhead, fees, and markups. Note there is a revenue budget for every cost code that also has a cost budget. In other words, we are tracking profitability at the job cost code level of detail, not just the overall prime contract level. The blue, labor hours budget, column lets you indicate the number of person hours you expect to use for this cost code, and you'll only enter labor hours for cost codes that have a labor component in the budget. This should be approximately equal to the expected labor cost for this cost code divided by the average hourly rate for your workers, including burden. The equipment runtime, downtime, and idle time hours let you track hours for any cost code that has an equipment cost component. The runtime hours will be approximately equal to the expected equipment cost for this cost code. Idle time and downtime hours should cover the remainder of the time that the equipment is on the job site. So, my import spreadsheet is ready, and in upcoming videos you'll learn how to create fixed lump sum and cost plus prime contracts. In this video, you learned how to set up the import spreadsheet template to import cost codes, cost budgets, and contract amounts for fixed lump sum, cost plus without GMP, and cost plus with GMP contracts.